Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken, brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Ten minutes after nine, that movie man's late. Movie men are always late. It's one of their principles never to let the person who's moving know whether they're going to arrive or not. But they do arrive. Twelve minutes late. They're always twelve minutes late. Oh, I'm so nervous. I've never moved into my own apartment before. Neither did I till I had one. You know what you're going to take with you? Oh, certainly. I made a list of everything. Oh, don't forget those four barrels of wedding presents in the hall. Four barrels and one cereal box. There wasn't room for Aunt Louise's present in the barrels. I had to pack it separately. <laughs> oh, there's the moving man now. He's only 11 minutes late. That makes him one minute early. Everything out of that room, lady. Not much space left in the van. Oh, dear. We have room for the four barrels in the hall? Lady, it's a small van. When you called up yesterday, you said you had just a few pieces, so the boss sent me down alone in the small van. There's no room for them four barrels. I practically moved the whole house by myself. But, but, but our wedding presents are in those four barrels. Can't make it this trip, lady. I'll pick them up Monday. And you didn't have it packed so good, either. You had two silver pots in a cereal box. Could have got dented. I put in a wooden box instead. Oh, thank you. That was Aunt Louisa's present. They're soup tureens, not pots. Look like pots. Don't let Aunt Louisa hear you say that. <laughs> Is she thinking of moving, too? <laughs> anyway, there, there was no room for it. You had that big leather chair, that big drawing table, and the file cabinet. It's a small van. No room for the wedding presents. Good, good. You, you better not let Aunt Louisa hear you say that. Truck loaded? You couldn't get a dime in unless you stood it on end. Mm. Are you in a big rush? Well, I'd like to get this job over with, Mr. Why? I'd like to move some furniture around in here. Uh, think you could help me for two dollars? Well, uh, I wasn't in too big a hurry. Uh, what'd you want to move? Well, first, a bed from one room to the other. Then a couple of chairs and a chest of drawers. All right, let's get started. This way. I've got the bed to be taken apart. Say, David, do you remember the way Mama's room was so we can put it back like it was? Mm, just about. Uh, you can help me where I fall down, Claudia. Where is she, anyway? She went downstairs. She said she had to get something. She'll be right back. Maybe we can fix up the room like she had it before uh, she gets mister, back. Mr. we won't get anything fixed unless we get started. Where do you want this stuff to go? Uh, next room. Here. Here, this one's ready. Ready? Ready. Uh, follow me. Look, I gotta follow you if I'm carrying the other end of the headboard. Is it very heavy, David? No. It is, lady. Watch out, you don't scratch it on the door. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's all right. We can fix it with some furniture polish. Uh, scratch my thumb, too. We can you put did? it down here. Oh. I can get the footboard and you can get the two sides. All right. Won't Mother be thrilled to see her, her room back the way it was? Mm, she'll be able to get a good night's rest again. Sleep in her own bed instead of on a couch. Excited <laughs> about moving? Didn't you notice? I could hardly eat breakfast. Here, let me give you a hand. Oh, I, I can do it myself. What do you mean you could hardly eat breakfast? I saw you eating two eggs and bacon. Oh, that was just habit. I mean, I didn't feel like eating. Hey, watch the door, David. Mm -mm. I guess you'll have to use furniture polish on the footboard, too, lady. Well, they match now. Uh, hold the footboard up straight, Claudia. I'll hold the headboard, and you can put it in the sides, okay? All right. All right. Yeah, this one's in. Uh, look, hold that thing up straighter, lady. This one? Yeah, thanks. Now, now the other one. In a little, mister. Okay. In. Okay. Oh, okay. Let go. Gosh, a bed without springs and a mattress certainly looks like a skeleton, doesn't it, David? And we'll put some flesh on it. <laughs> uh, come on, let's get the springs. Yeah, we can get the mattress and spring one trip. I'll, I'll show you how. David, tell me about the place we're moving into. Yeah, I told you about it. Kitchen, living room, bedroom, and the room I'm going to fix up with my drawing table and fire. No, I mean the way it's furnished. Oh, it's very nice, very nice. And with the mattress on top of the spring, we can make it through the door just by tipping a little. Now, watch. I see. Uh, you, you, you go first this time. Yeah, I got nothing to scratch now. Uh -oh. David, the paint scraped off the door. <laughs> Mister, you'll never make a move on me. Now, set it down square now. Uh -huh. That's it. I'll make the bed while you two bring in the chairs. Which one, lady? 
I ain't been here before you. Oh, uh, the maroon one from the living room. And, and, and the blue one from the other bedroom, too. Uh, I'll get the one from the other bedroom, Miss T. You've been having trouble with the door. <laughs> Fair enough. And don't carry it. Push it, David. One maroon chair coming up. Say, David, <coughs> think we ought to bring the blue chair in from the living room instead of the maroon one? The maroon chair is nearly there, and I think we should leave it the way it was. Where do you want it? Oh, well, put it next to the window. David, what kind of carpets do they have in our new apartment? Nice, nice. There. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Mama likes to sit there and look out at the street. Really, David, a person would think you'd never even seen the apartment we're going to move into. Uh, I did, but I paid absolutely no attention to minor details. Minor details? You walk on the carpet every day. Lady, I can't keep holding this chair. Where should I put it? Oh, I, I didn't hear you come in. It's because I didn't scrape the door. <laughs> well, where should I put the chair, lady? Uh, put it this side of the bed, right there. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, anything else? Uh, the chest of drawers in the other room. Got you. Uh, straighten out that side of the bedspread, David. Oh, I hope there are enough pots and pans there. If there aren't, we can borrow some from Mama. Borrow some what? Pots and pans you came back to soon. I'm sorry. If I knew that you two wanted to be alone, I'd have stayed away longer. No, I, I mean we're trying to put your room back the way it was before we moved in. We messed everything up for you. Well, thank you, both of you. The room looks almost the way it was. The chest of drawers is coming in. It's in, lady. Where's it go? Now put it over against the wall. Yeah? A little further to the right. That's right. All set now, lady? Yep, I guess that's all. Everything's back the way it was, Mama. David and I'll be going now. Well, thanks for putting things in order, David. I'll miss you, too. I ran downstairs for a present to start you off in your new home. Present? What is it, Mama? Nothing much. Same thing my mother gave me when I was first married. A pound of flour and a pound of sugar. Oh, a nice thought, Mrs. Brown. Then you ought to say things gracefully in those days. Well, you better be getting along. I'll finish straightening up around here. You're coming with us, isn't you, David? Mm, wouldn't be legal without you, Mrs. Brown. No, children. I think you should go into your own home for the first time by yourself. I won't budge from here unless you come along. Nor I. Well, you better come. i got to get back to the warehouse sometime. Well, all right. Just so that you can get back to the warehouse. <laughs> The nice part about living on the second floor is that if you don't feel like using the elevator, you can walk up. <laughs> I'd rather use the elevator, thank you. <laughs> Makes me feel very important, even if it only is for one floor. Isn't this exciting, David? It's just like cutting open a birthday cake with presents baked inside. <laughs> Here, here's our door. And the lock works perfectly. Mm, so does mine at home now, thank you. May I carry you over the threshold, Mrs. Norton? No, David, not here. Not here? Where then? When we get our own apartment with our own furniture and everything, I'll feel differently about it. Oh. Did it hurt your feelings? I didn't mean to, David, but that's where I feel. If you want to... No, it, I... I understand. Well, Mrs. Brown, Mrs. Norton, aren't you even curious to wait to see the Norton residence looks? I'm dying of curiosity. Well, there's only one way of finding out. It's by going in, lady. These valises are getting heavy. It's rather dark here, isn't it, David? Mm. I'll turn on the light. Still dark. Where does the window face, David? Why, looking out that window, you get a lovely view of... I guess it's the apartment on the second floor of the building next door. Well, I'm it's... Disappointed? is isn't the way I thought it would be, David. I'm sorry. Nonsense. It's just what you two need, a place of your own. The furniture's so, so old-fashioned, those oriental rugs and everything... David, can't we go back and stay with Mama? You certainly cannot. I didn't invite you. Where does this thing go, mister? Oh, my drafting table. The room at the end of the hall, please. Gotcha. Now, you two ladies care to see the rest of the apartment? Maybe the kitchen's nice. The kitchen? Right this way. There you are, the kitchen. It's very small, isn't it, David? Well, we won't do much cooking. Very nice. Just right for two. Let's see if he left you silverware in China. Mm, there's your silverware. All the silver plates worn off. What kind of a man is this, Mr. Tucker, of yours? A uh, bachelor. Take a look in that closet, Claudia. Any china there? Uh-huh. Well, at least that's all right. A nice stove, refrigerator. Faucet leaks. I will fix it. Everything's out of the van, mister. When do you want me to come back to those barrels? 
What barrel? Oh, the wedding presents we left them at your house. There's no room in the van. It was a very small van. Say, Mama, would you like to keep the presents and oh, put them all around the room to remind you of us till we get our own apartment? I would not. Young man, come back to my house and pick up those barrels as soon as you can. Pick them up on Monday, lady. Uh, good luck, mister. Uh, thanks. Thanks for helping me out. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. So long. Hey, wait a minute. I'll go with you to the door. Uh, how much do I owe you? Mama, am I going crazy, or is this the worst place I've ever seen? Well, it's not so very good, Claudia. But you said to David I that know, it was so... I know, now look. You've got to understand this. David's a man, your husband. He's done something that's rather hard to do now. He's found an apartment, a place where you two can live a life of your own. He's proud of having found this place, and maybe it's blinded him a little to its faults. But just as he can't see them, for his sake, you shouldn't want to see them. Do you understand, Claudia? No matter what the rest of the apartment looks like, I'm going to say I love it. Now, for the rest of the house. The bedroom, right this way. I hope it's nicer than the rest of the apartment. All right. Here you are. Judge for yourself. David, it, it, it's lovely. Why, you, you you wouldn't believe the same person had anything to do with the living room. Maybe he just likes sleeping, not living. <laughs> <laughs> and the beds are so soft. And, and, and covered with this nice, worn material. I didn't know you liked worn material. I'm crazy over it. Ask Mama. Aren't I, Mama? Is she? And that's what she said. Uh. Now, who can that be? No one has our number, not even me. Only one way to find out. Probably Tucker. Tell him Tucker doesn't live here anymore. Yes? Oh, hello, Roger. Roger? It's uh, Roger, yeah. Oh, well, uh, we're all moved in, Roger. But no, no, Mrs. Brown likes it, but Claudia does. I do, too. Well, I don't care anyway. Mrs. Brown is the important one of the family. Well... I really married Claudia to be near her. Let me speak. Hey, don't grab. Roger, how are you? Listen, don't listen to anything David says. I'm in love with this place. It's so... It's, it's so... Quaint. Quaint, yes. Of course I like it. It's just like home, only... Well, Mama's got a view, and it's lighter and higher up, and it's furnished better, but... How's it like home? Well, uh... Mama's got four rooms, too. Claudia, Roger's going to think you're a goop. Let me speak to Wait you. a minute. Mama wants to speak to you. Here, Mama. Roger, I just want to say thanks. Seems my daughter's too ill-mannered to think of things like that. I am not. I'm just too excited. You just apologize. What? Yes. Yes, I'll tell him. Goodbye, Roger. Tell us what? Roger wishes both of you luck in the new apartment. Good old Roger. He told me not to bother about coming back to the office this afternoon. Good. Then we can get used to the rooms together. Will it? Take an awful lot of getting used to, Claudia? Not as long as you're around, David. I won't look at the furniture. Okay. I won't look at the rugs. And I won't be here to look at you two looking at each other. I've seen the place, put the seal of approval on it, and now goodbye. Thanks for the seal of approval, Mama. And thanks for the use of your daughter, Mrs. Brown. Feel free to drop in on the Norton residence any time, Mama. I will. I'm leaving my gloves here so I can come back and say I forgot them. (laughs) (laughs) Goodbye, you two, and good luck. Goodbye, Mama. (laughs) Goodbye, Mrs. Brown. Now that there's more Coke available, make sure you have a good supply in your refrigerator all the time. Keep a few extra bottles of Coke on hand so you'll always have refreshment ready and waiting. And don't forget to enjoy the pause that refreshes with ice-cold Coca-Cola at the familiar red cooler when you're out marketing. Shop refreshed. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir, and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs>